we have thousands of amazing stories in our files. Ordinary people having extraordinary experiences, from encounters with strange spacecraft to actual face-to-face -face encounters with extraterrestrials. And then there are the ghosts and the hauntings, the bumps in the night that send shivers down your spine. And what about strange places? Weird buildings, underground caverns and temples and caves. Some of those are a real mystery. Who put them there? What were they for? And when were they put there? One thing we can assure you of, if it's weird, if it's paranormal, if it's supernatural, it's in the Y Files. in this episode of The Y-Files. We go underground to dig up the story behind this unusual shell grotto. And we hit the road to find out more about an extraordinary UFO sighting. In 1835, schoolboy Joshua Newlove was digging in a field above our heads. He found a large tablet of stone and on dislodging that saw a large hole leading down into who knows what. When he was actually lowered down into the hole, he discovered down here something quite remarkable. A grotto filled with intricate patterns made by not 300 or 3,000, but 3 million of these. Seashells. Let's take a look. The history of the grotto is very obscure. It was discovered in 1835. That is on record. That cannot be disputed. And it was open to the public in 1837. Again, cannot be disputed. It's on record. But nobody knows how long the grotto remained undiscovered. Some people think it's about 2,000 years old. Some people have come up with other theories. Lots of studies have been done, but nothing conclusive has ever been found as there is nothing to compare it with anywhere in the world today. I feel it is very old. I feel it has a lot of mystery. There have been a lot of things happening in the grotto that I would say are good. The feeling is extremely good. I love the grotto. Um, my own feelings is it could be women's work, although it has been attributed to possibly monks or um, people of similar um, type of where they would do work as a dedication. But I think the delicacy of the work could be women's work. The previous owner was very into comparing signs of the zodiac and uh, dates and dates of birth. Her mother had been interested in psychic matters and in fact did hold seances in the grotto. Someone has written that there is a similar design on the fountain in Pompeii. Now I haven't personally seen this, but the work bears a resemblance to the signs and symbols in the lower room where you find the altar.
The amount of dedication that's been put into its construction uh, and there have been over three million shells used which must have taken an incredible amount of time. The dedication going into it makes it a place of worship but it is believed not to be a Christian worship. I think that's the one thing the experts do agree on. It is not a Christian worship, it is a pagan worship. People do disagree over its origin, of course, but uh, the one thing that does remain is it is a place of beauty and it can't be found anywhere else. Coming up on The Y Files. We hear the debate over the grotto's history. Well, we've now come down into this amazing grotto with Eileen, and it kind of goes on for miles down here. So let's go down and have a uh, look. Hang on just a minute. Ah. Don't go that way. Right. Look, we've got here your three-pointed star, which right. is showing you your right way of life. Uh -huh. We don't go that way. What's that way, then? That's the way of the devils. The way of the devils? The way of the devils. We go this way. Now, this area of the grotto is called the, the Dome, or the Domes, um, and it's got not exactly a ghost, but a blue lady. Tell us about this. The blue lady is reputed to have appeared in this area. Mm -hmm. This is rather a special area because the guardians of the temple would have used these little niches that you see here right. to stand and guard. So this is a very special area, the dome continuing up to allow the light to come through. Uh, the blue lady has on occasions been seen here. I can't say I've experienced it. I You've would love to. You've smelt something there, haven't you? Yes, I have. I came down here once in the winter when I was working on a project for the grotto, and because the place was all closed up, nobody around, I noticed there was a very peculiar smell. It wasn't perfume, it was mm. more an incense type of smell. Now, I'm the world's worst skeptic, <laughs> but I had to call my husband to verify that this smell was here. Now, he's a skeptic too, and he said, somebody's bath water. And I said, well, what, here in the grotto? How do you get bath water down here? Yeah. So I felt that if this lady was going to show herself to me, it would be now. And although I stood very still with my eyes closed and waited, nothing appeared. <laughs> I live in hope. Ah, you never know. I and actually, that. directly above us is where it was kind of first discovered, That's where the it? boys came through the dome. Right. Yes, they uncovered a large stone in a very rough area at the back of the school. And the schoolmaster's son was lowered down through this hole. And what a surprise he got when he got down here. Well, when they pulled him up, his <laughs> first reaction was, it's Aladdin's cave. Yeah. Can you imagine a very impressionable 12-year-old schoolboy? Absolutely amazing. Yes. Mm. Lovely area, this. Beautiful. Now, if you make your way down through the labyrinths and tunnels of this grotto, you eventually come to this final room. It's called the Altar Room, and waiting here to talk to us is John Williams from Margate Museum. He's the museum's officer. Um, John, it is a fascinating thing, this grotto. Mm -hmm. What are your theories about it? Um, well, basically, uh, I think it's about 250 years old. I don't think it uh, has any Phoenician connections. Um, it was discovered in 1835 and opened up to the public in 1837. And I say perhaps 250 years old because that's when Margate started to develop as a resort hmm. in the 1750s. And it's more than likely, uh, it could, could well be uh, built at that time. Well, John is uh, entitled to his opinion, of course, and he does say it is his personal opinion. But I do feel there's a lot of difference between 250 years and the reputed 2,000 years that it could be. Yes. Have you ever seen anything even vaguely similar to no, this No, nothing, nothing, nothing like it at all. What do you think this may have been used for? My own personal opinion, mm. this is my personal opinion, sure. that it was a folly. Wait. No, I don't think it could have been a folly. 
I feel the tremendous amount of work that went into constructing this grotto couldn't have been completed in one generation's lifetime. Therefore, it excludes the theory of a folly for one person. I feel it is a place of worship, or has been a place of worship, not now, but it's been a place of worship. 